We are in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Randy Gordon, along with former editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Steve Farhood. And we've got another outstanding our boxing bout for you. It's four rounds in the light heavyweight division between Kyle McPhee and Nassim Dean. Two guys at the way in today were glaring at each other, a little shoving going on, a little trash talking in there. Each guy's in there, you'll see, you'll see. Well, a lot of times that trash talk doesn't live up in the ring. We'll see if it does tonight as we await the arrival of Nassim Dean. He's one of the Nassim I know who talks a lot, who really <laughs> hasn't lived up to that talk. Prince Nassim. Well, Randy, we had Nassim Dean, uh, his pro debut, his only pro fight so far on Star Boxing. He won. And uh, we want to see more of him tonight. We will in a few minutes. We're going to get the introduction from Ring It Out for Dean the Dream Stone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this bout of the evening is a special Battle of the Bronx. It is scheduled for four rounds in the Cruiserweight Division. The referee in charge of the action from New York City, Jim Santa. Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing white and black, weighing in at 177 pounds. His professional record, one victory, one defeat, and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Bronx, New York, presenting James Harris. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, also wearing white and black, weighs the in commission told at us 177 and three Hello. quarter pounds. His professional record, one victory with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, also from the Bronx, New York, presenting Nassim Dean. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Well, here we go. They call it a cruiserweight match. Uh, in my mind, it's more of a light heavyweight match. With light heavyweight ends at 175. Let's get a little technical here. 177 and three quarters for Nassim Dean. James Harris, 177. Opening bell. Referee Jim Santa. Here we go. Well, right away, you see Dean's style. What a body on the scene, Dean. Is he, is he a rock or what? And, and what he does is, almost like Mike Tyson, kind of looks like Mike Tyson, he squares up as he fights, which is a dangerous thing to do because you're presenting more of yourself as a target. But he's a come forward, square up bomber. James Harris reminds me physically of a guy who had a tremendous body, one of the greatest, I think, in the history of boxing that didn't turn out to be a great champion. Now I'm talking about former WBA heavyweight champion, Bruce Selden. The Atlantic City Express, who expressed his way to the canvas in Las Vegas a few years ago against Mike Tyson. <laughs> but what a body he had. You know, Dean applying constant pressure. He's got to get close. You know, when you have arms and shoulders like him, very rarely are you a good boxer. Usually you're a pressure fighter, a puncher, an in-fighter. And boy, he does look like Tyson sometimes. Look at the way he holds his gloves in front of him. Yeah. And the sudden side-to-side -side movement. Well, he said at the weigh-in that his favorite fighter is guess who. So there's no question that he emulates him. All the way down to no socks. And I believe I gave that rock-hard body. I think I may have said James Harris, when indeed it's Dean with the massive bulging biceps. Don't you hate when both guys wear the same color trunks? <laughs> it's very confusing. I hate it. When I was commissioner, I would make sure. I would absolutely make sure. I ask guys all the time, what trunks are you wearing? But at least one of the guys has the white trunks with the black bars on it going down.
Well, interesting style matchup. It's pretty clear here who the boxer is and who the puncher is. Dean's just got to let his hands go a little more easily. You know, he's so heavily muscled that every shot, it seems, is trying to knock down the Empire State Building. He should just let his hands go a little more and work for the knockout instead of trying to force it. Well, let's see what happens if this thing starts going round. Those big bombs all of a sudden might start becoming little firecrackers. This one is scheduled for four rounds in the light heavyweight slash cruiserweight division. See what Harris does, because, uh, you know, if he's going to just grab every time Nassim Dean gets close, well, that's not going to get it done. Where's the jab from Harris? Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. We're back from the Roseland Ballroom in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Randy Gordon along with Steve Farhood and Nassim Dean and James Harris, round number two, light heavyweight slash cruiserweights. And I say slash because they're just over the light heavyweight limit. Each guy weighed in at just over 177. Light heavyweight limit, 175. You know, Randy, in round one, really neither guy was particularly effective doing what he was doing because you have the boxer who's running around the ring not jabbing, grabbing whenever Dean gets close, and you have Dean the puncher kind of telegraphing his shots. I'd like to see him lead with some shots to the body. You know, he's quick with his feet chasing his, his opponent. He's not letting his hands go. Dean trying to cut the ring off, keeping those hands high, looking for the hard, heavy shots. Hard to tell which hand he really hits hardest with. He seems like he has power in both fists, ripping the body with the right hand, and again, and again with the right hand, favors that right hand. When a guy lets three or four shots go with one hand, you know which hand he favors. Well, you see how square Dean turns when he's on the attack. There's a reason they teach you to fight with one foot in front of the other. There's a lot of reasons, actually. Leverage, for one. Sure. And defense. You're giving your opponent less to hit. I remember when Tyson fought Holyfield the second time, how immature she seemed at times because he was so square. That might have been the first time that I really remember when he got his feet tangled up, and I'm talking about Mike Tyson, that he was really off balance because he's been getting away with it from day one. That's because of that tremendous hand speed and brutal punching power. Well, the comparisons between team Dean and Tyson are obvious. You can't help but make them. James Harris is like an octopus just grabbing all over. I'm not just talking about the arms and the back. Two times already, he has grabbed Dean around the legs. <laughs> Whatever it takes, huh? <laughs> Referee Jim Santa, veteran. Former football player at the University of Maryland. Well, Harris just isn't doing enough. You know, it, it's really like he's thinking defense before he has to. See, an ineffective jab, moving mostly to his left, the natural way to move, but it's not enough offense from him. Whoop. Ah, the trunks of James Harris coming down. Referee Jim Santa calls time, gets those trunks back up, and he is assaulted, just mugged by Dean. Good left hook by Dean. Maybe his best punch so far. Final few clicks of the clock. You'll hear the tap on the ring from the timekeeper, Kathy Palillo. Two seconds remain. Bombs away. End of the round. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout.
we're back from the Roseland Ballroom in New York City. We've got light heavyweights, cruiserweights in the ring. And I keep saying light heavyweights, cruiserweights again, just over that light heavyweight limit. I'm Randy Gordon along with Steve Farhood. This is round number three, scheduled for four rounds. The man with the black stripes on his trunks is muscular Nassim Dean against the slim kind of runner, James Harris. He's not doing much boxing as much as he is running. And holding. And you know, Harris, 1-1-1 one, one, and one go, coming into this fight. Never been stopped, but he's really been at, at middleweight. 159, his last fight. Fighting 177 here. That's a big jump up in weight. And uh, might be better off at middleweight. You know, he's quick. He's got quick feet, but the difference in power and strength between him and Dean is uh, considerable. Steve, these guys, of course, tonight, this one is a four-rounder. Historically, when do we move them up? When do they head to six? When do they head to eight? Ten rounds, the main event. When do they head for the title? Right now, are these guys ready for six? Well, with Dean, you probably have to tell from the gym. Uh, you said historically, of course, years ago, guys fought fours and sixes forever. I mean, 30, 40, 50 fights. Today, 30, 40, 50 fights are a world champion. Yeah, you so, can forget about yeah, it. Yeah, so it's a big difference. Uh, guys move up from four to six. On the average, I would say after what? Maybe four to six to eight fights? That's really about it. In fact, when guys come out of the Olympics, many times they turn pro in six rounders. Right. Go back to 1976, two of the real outstanding amateurs of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard and Howard Davis, each turn pro in six round bouts. Many other of those Olympians did too. Evander Holyfield and on and on and on. Milton Taylor. The big jump is from 8 to 10 or 8 to 12. And Dean may stop his opponent yet because look, look at how he commits to his punches. And if uh, Harris is going to be on the ropes, he will probably end up through the ropes and on the floor. Very bad play for him to be. He just took a hard left to the face, but his body is getting just tattooed. Well, what Dean does, when you, when you pump fake or feint against Dean, he jerks to one side. What Harris should be doing is pump faking, make him jerk to one side, then land the shot, knowing where he's going to go. Watch when he faints. You see that Dean makes that sudden movement. That's a definite Tyson move. You know this guy. I mean, he said Tyson's his favorite fighter, and you see a lot of Mike Tyson in him with those hands high, squared off, bobbing and weaving, just like Catskill Thunder. I made a mistake. He is wearing socks. He's wearing little white socks. Dean. Because Tyson, of course, no robe, no socks. And of course, all black shoes, all black trunks, comes into the row and ring wearing the towel that's cut out. Right. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rock and Fights. For ticket information, Go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, rockin' fights, it's a knockout. We're back with the fourth and final round. Light heavyweights slash cruiserweights Nassim Dean and James Harris. This has been a fight so far of let me chase you around the ring. Nassim with the black stripes has been chasing James Harris. If you're scoring at home, how do you have this one? I, in my mind, Steve, I got Nassim up on, on that pressure. He's, he's put on that effective pressure. And as, as the rounds mount, he's been a little more effective each round. But initially, he was only landing a body punch or two per round. Last round, he landed some big shots to the head. He's wearing him down. Wearing him down mentally as much as he is physically because Harris just isn't dealing well with the pressure. Now Harris got those tassels on his shoes flopping around. And they are really flopping because he is moving, moving, moving. And he's been doing that since the opening bell. And Harris just missed about four straight jabs and Dean smiled at him. I tell you what, I like what I've seen so far from Nassim Dean. He needs a little bit of polishing. You pointed out the way he dips and rolls. But hey, early in his career, very early in his career, 
a big 1 and 0 so far. And I think closing in on 2 and 0. Randy, body types very often determine how you fight. Can a guy like that, we're always taught, you know, the best punches are straight punches. Can a guy like that throw straight punches or because of the way he's built? Is that impossible? Possibly he'll be able to be taught that. But I think because his idol is Mike Tyson and he's emulating Mike Tyson so much, I'm not sure that he even wants to throw straight punches. There's so much of the young Mike Tyson in him, even of the old Tyson. Now, there's that right uppercut he just missed with. That was Mike Tyson's best punch early on. I love that double right uppercut from Tyson. Body, right up Body, to the head. Body, right. Bing, bing. Nobody, maybe in the history of boxing, ever threw a double right uppercut like that. See, those punches are being, he's winging those shots. Let him shorten up on those shots. He'll start landing a lot more. Hey, you talked before about when does a four-round fighter go to six. I keep being at four for a while. He's in shape. He's throwing punches now with the same velocity and power that he was in the first round. That's a good sign for a heavily muscled fighter. But I keep him in fours for a while, especially against opponents like this, guys who move. Guys who, is, who are right there for him, he'll be fine. Those will be the easy ones. These are the hard ones where he has to chase his opponent down. I always hope at this stage in the fight, final round, that the guys don't fall into a clinch. Final 10 seconds, they don't fall into a clinch and headbutt each other. You hate to see that. End of the fight. Put your pencils down. Mark your scorecards. On my unofficial card, I've got Nassim Dean winning in that round, as in just about every other round. And I think this one is just academic. You're looking in, into the corner of James Harris. Now we switch across to the heavily muscled Nassim Dean. Flexes those biceps for us. Wonder if he lifts weights. <laughs> or how much does yeah, he lift weights? That's a better question. Well, he limits himself to 500 push ups an hour. Well, I really think this one's academic. I believe Dean marched him down, but you know, we don't count. We just call him. Dean Stone tells us about it. And here's Dean to tell us who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here at the Roseland, New York City, we go to the scorecard. Judge Julie Letterman sees about 40 to 36. There's one shot out. Judge George Gabriel also sees about 40 to 36. Another shot and out. Judge Ron McNair sees the contest 39 and 37 for your winner by unanimous decision, Nassim D. Well, just the way we thought it was going to go. A unanimous decision. He is now 2-0 for the Mike Tyson look-alike, fight-alike, punch-alike, light heavyweight cruiserweight, Nassim Dean. We'll be back on Star Boxing.